Well, it was different than anything I've ever experienced before. When they announced this vote, it was dead silence, and there was no cheering. This was a lot different, so it really shook up a lot of people because everybody knows it's a very serious vote, but even those who wanted it, uh, uh, you know, weren't shouting, obviously, but the people who didn't want it, they they know, too, that this is serious stuff. But uh, to me, it was a rather amazing vote because leading up to this vote in the last week, uh, almost everybody I talked to, you know, uh, didn't want to vote for it, and there was so much sentiment against it. Uh, and yet, at the same time, I was surprised that the leadership brought it up because it's such a such a defeat to have something like this go down. But uh, you know, I think uh, I think it was the emails that made the difference, uh, and uh, I'm sure those members of the Campaign for Liberty uh, must have had something to do with it because they know how to generate some mail. And the people here in in Washington, uh, the members of Congress knew darn well that the people didn't like this but it was so bad that the people uh, you know really were shouting out against it but, you know the uh, the amazing thing is that I'm not even sure this is necessary the markets are down now that the vote is over the markets are down maybe five six hundred points which is a lot but it's not really that drastic we see we've seen days like that quite frequently so it wasn't like the markets depended on this appropriation of course my argument has been all along that the money, if we voted for the money, the markets and the dollars would get much worse, but perceptions were that, oh, we needed this money. I think something else has happened that uh, people realized, I, I think, on Wall Street. Today, the Fed pumped in over $600 billion worth of credit into the markets without congressional approval. They had already pumped in over $700 billion. But this was another $700 billion of appropriation. So it, it seems strange sometimes to me exactly you know, why they went through this agony of, uh, of requiring this vote, because they do have the vehicle. So no matter which fund it is, whether it's FDIC or the, or the Trust Fund for Social Security, none of those are going to go uh, go broke, so to speak. What's going to go broke is the dollar, and that's what we have to be concerned about. So uh, I argued the case on the floor before the vote that uh, voting for this money would really weaken the dollar. But believe me, by not voting for it, the dollar's still going to get much weaker because the Federal Reserve is capable of increasing money and credit at will. The spending has never stopped. And even this week, those people who didn't want all this spending on uh, on this bailout, they were voting for the continuing resolution. They were voting $600 billion for the uh, military budget and our empire around the world. So un until we address that, we can expect these problems to continue. But believe me, today was uh, a very interesting vote. I am, uh, I am pretty surprised uh, at the last minute that it went down uh, as easily as it did. And uh, quite frankly, though, I think the markets uh, are not going to fall apart because of this. The market and the dollar will eventually fall apart because of the way we spend, the way we borrow, the way we inflate, and that is the problem. Government is too big. Until we get government uh, back to the size and scope that it's supposed to be, we're going to continue to have these problems. So uh, eventually we have to address the monetary issue. We need constitutional money. I am just uh, working real hard now on a new audit the Federal Reserve bill, and in my little talk today, I had a total of two minutes before I emphasized that's where the regulation ought to be, on the Federal Reserve. Uh on, on the, um, uh, it, it also on the uh, President's Working Group on Financial Markets and the Exchange Stabilization Fund. That's where all the mischief is. That's the regulation. We don't need to regulate the market. I made a strong point in my talk that the worst thing that could come of all this is if the free market and capitalism gets blamed for this. That's what happened with the Depression. They blamed the gold standard and free markets. And once again, they're talking about how terrible free enterprise is and the cost all this problem. That is not the case. What we've had is cronyism, it's interventionism, and inflationism, and corporatism. That's what is wrong. What we need is more freedom, not more government.
Goodbye.